In this episode, I will be talking about custom properties with Photon. Custom properties are ideal for values that you want to share across uh, the room to other players that don't necessarily need to be updated in real time and also that you don't want to have to store a reference to the player or an object in order to access them. You can use pretty much any type of data that can be serialized through Photon normally. Uh, so like floats, integers, strings, and even vectors. The type of data you may want to uh, share to other players is something like perhaps a ping, something you know, you'd want to update occasionally, uh, but isn't super important when the player gets that update. Uh, maybe you want to sync up their match history like how many games they've won or um, lost or left, things like that. So like I said, it's just very generic values that you just kind of want to be able to grab easily that don't really pertain to any object particularly. In my example, I will be showing the player ping and uh, showing other players pings inside a room. To start, we'll be using the player network. So locate the scripts folder and then networks and then open up player network. Photon uses hash tables to share the data or custom properties, so I am going to specify a new one. There are various hash tables. Uh, there's a Photon hash table, there's hash tables used with WinRT, I think Windows Phone as well. Uh, so with all that being said, I'm actually going to specify the namespace of the hash table when declaring it. So I'm going to jump down to line 11 and I will do private exitgames.client.photon which is a namespace, the hash table we need is under dot hash table. I'm going to name it M. Uh, we'll go to player custom properties. And I'm also going to initialize it. So equals new exitgames.client.photon.hash table. Now I'm going to write the section of code which utilizes this hash table. So I'm going to go all the way down to the very bottom right below my rpc underscore create player I'm going to create a new curatine so I'm going to call it private i enumerator and uh, we don't have the namespace for this either so make sure you add it in it should be system dot collections we'll call it c set ping with no parameters and I only want this code to execute if I'm connected to photon because you obviously can't set photon properties if you're not connected to photon. So I'm going to do while photon network dot connected. I'm going to add my brackets. I'm going to do m underscore player custom properties. And I'm just going to call the property ping. So you use the flat brackets here. And in the, in the brackets you put the name of the property in quotation marks. And then I'm going to set its value by doing equals photon network dot get ping. So get ping is actually a function that's built into the uh, photon network. So you don't actually have to do any of the other work to get that ping. Um, how this works is you're setting whatever property you specify to whatever value comes after. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the ping. Uh, it could be, you know, a random string, or it could be, like I said earlier, a vector three, float, etc. Maybe worth noting there is an add option as well. So, for example, I'm gonna do m underscore player custom properties dot add. We'll just say games one, and the value afterwards, and uh, we'll just say five. This is if you only want to add a value once. This is for something that uh, you just want to make it obvious that you only need to do it once and you don't have to change it as you go. Now whenever you do it like I have on this line here it does actually add the value for you so it's the same thing as adding the value and setting it. So either way it really works um, I just prefer this way because it saves a little bit of time. There's also a uh, remove method as well so if you want to remove a property from the hash table you can just use the dot remove all right, so once we set the value, we now need to uh, sign in across the Photon Network, which is actually very easy. So it's just Photon Network dot player, which is referring to yourself dot set custom properties, 
and we're just going to use m underscore player custom properties. Now we don't want this running all the time because that's going to be very bad if you're sending this uh, pretty much every frame. So we're going to add a yield return new wait for seconds. I'm going to do this every half a second which is a bit extreme but I want to show you that it's working so I'm going to have it update rather quickly. And then go down below the while statement so if that ever breaks for example when you are no longer connected to the photon we're just going to do yield break which will exit the enumerator. Go ahead and save. And now I'm going to make one that actually shows our ping to show that it's working. We will move this code over to the player listing eventually uh, where you can see the player name and so on inside the room. But just to show you that it's working I'm going to make a very simple enumerator. So again private I enumerator we'll call it C show ping and I'm going to actually just copy the code right here paste it in there and I'm going to get rid of this line and I'll do int ping equals you have to cast whatever you're getting to the to the data type uh, so it's a vector 2 you cast to a vector 2 of course and this is an integer so we're casting it to an int so photon network dot player dot custom properties and we're going to refer to it by the key which is ping and I'm going to now get rid of this line here and I'm going to do debug.log or print whatever you want my ping is plus ping and I'm going to I'm going to also display the ping every 0.5 seconds and just like before yield break on the bottom so save now we have to start the curatine here uh, so that we're actually setting in showing our ping so I'm going to do private void on connected to master so whenever keep in mind this is called whenever photon connects to the master server when connected to the master server photon I'm going to do start curatine C show ping I'm going to copy the line paste it right above and I'm going to do C set ping save everything and let's go back to the editor so I'm going to wait for everything to compile and then I'm going to clear my log and I will hit play and let's watch the console here so you can see that it's connected and it is updating my ping and the ping is changing so you know it's working let me turn off collapse so you can see that it updates every every time that it does change. So it's clearly working. Now we just need to assign it to the player listing. Go ahead and hit stop. Going back to my project tab and uh, going back to my uh, actually I don't know where I have that. Here we go. So it's under current room. So scripts and then current room and open up player listing. So I need a, another serialized field. I'm going to call it private text underscore player ping. I will make an accessor for it. It's going to be a private text. I'm going to name this m underscore player ping. And like the other one, I'm only going to do a get because I don't want to potentially overwrite the value. So I'm going to do return underscore player ping and if you saw my other videos I am changing my naming convention hence the M underscore name uh, so let's see I guess we need to assign the value so save and let's go back to the editor the player listing prefab should be under my prefabs folder so go ahead and jump over there And I'm just going to drop the player listing in the scene anywhere. And I'm going to expand it in the hierarchy. And I'm going to take the player name text object, just duplicate it, rename it to player ping text. I'm going to select the player listing object because that's what has the script on it. And where I have player ping, I'm just going to drop in the new player ping object. 
and uh, I'm going to change default text to negative one on the player ping text so that we know it it's not yet set so if we see negative one we know the ping hasn't been fetched yet and then go ahead and hit apply and delete the player listing from your hierarchy let's jump back over to Visual Studio and I'm going to open up player network now I don't want to call this uh, this curatine or you know I enumerator too many times like for example it's possible that it could still be executing if you disconnect because let's say you disconnect um, right after it starts back up again and then you reconnect real quick within you know when a certain time it could potentially still be running so we want to actually make a reference to the cure team we create so that way we can stop it and then play it again whenever we connect uh, so go up to the very top and on line 14 let's do private curatine m ping curatine and uh, to stop and start it is going to be very similar to what we have so we're going to go back down to on connected to master we don't actually need to call the show ping one anymore so delete that and before the start cure teen on set ping we're just going to do m m underscore ping cure teen equals start cure teen set ping so that will create a reference to the cure teen that's running and that way we can access it later which we're actually going to do a check right above that so let's make an if statement if m underscore ping cure teen does not equal null stop cure teen m underscore ping curatine so that way there is no chance of us running it twice I'm not going to stop the curatine when we disconnect the photon because it will automatically break from it if we're no longer connected so I don't really care about that go ahead and save changes I think I'm also going to uh, change the interval from half a second because like I said earlier that's that's kinda kinda quick um, I'm going to set the ping only every 5 seconds, so change that from 0.5 to just 5. Now we're not going to be using this one anymore inside the player network, but we will actually uh, use it so we don't have to rework our code. So select the C underscore show ping, cut, go to player listing. Let's just drop a few lines below apply photon player, paste it in there you're going to get the error again because it's missing the namespace so make sure you add system.collections and instead of doing a debug log we're just going to do m underscore player ping dot text equals ping and it says you can't convert it into a string uh, so I have to actually do dot to string and we're gonna run this curatine we'll say every I will do every second it's not actually um, it's not actually hitting the network too frequently and it's not really burdening so one second will be fine so save everything and let's jump back to the editor so one thing I did forget to do was actually line up the text we just put on the player listing so we're gonna have to do that so select your player listing prefab, drop it into the player layout group under current room. You won't be able to see it because the lobby is over it currently, so select lobby and temporarily disable it. Then let's go back to the player listing prefab, expand it, and um, I'm going to change the alignment on the player name text from the center and move it over to the left. I'm probably going to change the anchor from stretch as well and uh, let's just do right here to the middle left and then I will move it over ever so slightly by uh, moving the handle here and for the player ping I'm going to do the same thing except I'm going to set it over to the right I'm going to change the anchor from stretch to the middle right and I will just move it over left a little bit and once that's done, go ahead and hit apply. 
delete the player listing from your hierarchy and make sure you re-enable lobby. Save your scene. Actually, I'm being all kinds of forgetful today. Uh, let's go back to Visual Studio. Should still be under player listing. We forgot to start the curatine here. So under apply photon player, which if you remember is called whenever the object is added to the list, we're just going to do start curatine uh, c underscore show ping. And I'm not going to worry about assigning a reference to the curatine because if you get disconnected it should destroy your room uh, and thus the object will disappear anyway. So save, let's go back to the editor, give it a shot by hitting play, going to make a random room. Okay, so it looks like my ping is indeed updating, so that seems to be working just fine. I guess now we need to make sure it works across multiple clients. Actually, before we do that, I forgot yet another thing. Um, sorry, I had a late night last, last night. So we don't actually want to show our own ping. We want to show the ping of the player on this player listing. So that's a pretty easy change. We're just going to remove the photon network dot player which refers to ourself and replace it with photon player which is the reference we have right up here and once you do that go ahead and save let's go back to the editor I'm going to perform a build so I'm going to do build and run and uh... Let me just pick a random resolution here. I don't think that's going to fit right, but that's a little off. That's okay though. So I'm going to make a room and then I'm going to hit play in the editor as well. You can't see the ping, but that's okay. You'll see it on the editor version. So I'm going to join and you can now see that the pings are updating for both players and they are different because of course each player is going to have its own ping. So that's it. I closed out of the compiled version and I'm going to also close out of the editor or rather stop the editor from playing. And uh, that's it. That's how you use custom properties. And you can also bypass the um, start cure team stuff if you don't need to update it you know, um, every so often. If you just want to update it once, then you obviously don't need to do the cure teams. There's also a uh, custom properties option for rooms as well, which I'm going to just go over very quickly. So go to the lobby folder under scripts and let's open up the room layout group script. And I have a method void room received. And this is where I pass in the room name, but um, you can also pass in the room itself. So instead of just a name, you could actually pass in the entire room and pull information from it. And this is this is basically how you would do it, just like we did really with the player, except we're going to use the room uh, variable instead. So it's just room dot custom properties and whatever the object key is. So uh, ping, for example, and you can see it looks basically the same uh, like before. You would have to cast it like you did with the actual player ping. And if you wanted to set values like the game type, free for all, uh, deathmatch, whatever, you would do photon network dot room dot set custom properties, and then you would pass in the hash table here, just like we did under player network, where we have photon network dot player dot set custom properties and the hash table. Uh, I believe you have to call this after you create the room, though. And you probably want to make sure that it can only be done if you're the master client because you don't want to accidentally call this from someone who's not the room owner. And this is just kind of pseudo code. It doesn't actually do anything right now. So I'm going to delete those lines, save everything, and that concludes this video.